Now I'm going to discipline the dog by rubbing their nose in it, swatting them with a newspaper, something, something. All of these things are archaic and not beneficial. You can correct or interrupt the behavior if you catch them timely, meaning probably clicked on this video because you're struggling with potty training with your brand new puppy. Well, guess what folks? So are we. This little girl Duel is having just a little bit of issues with potty training and as a professional, I'm here to tell you it can be normal, okay? Not all of them go through this process the same, but there are five specific tips that I have for you today that will help you to be more successful on the track to being a clean, potty trained, amazing little puppy, all right? First and foremost, folks, we need to make sure that our puppies are healthy. UTIs, bladder infections, um, urinary tract infections, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, those are fairly common with little puppies, especially with females because their little parts get close to the dirt where the bacteria lives. So uh, if you're struggling a lot, and I mean, have been working on it for more than a week and don't seem to be making any progress, definitely reach out to your vet, find out if in fact you do or do not have a puppy with a UTI. Now, I will say UTIs are tough to test for and tough to reliably test for. So a lot of times uh, treatment is just a protocol that is given. If your puppy is displaying symptoms, excuse me, displaying symptoms like peeing, um, multiple times when you take them out, small amounts, um, that can be a sign of discomfort or a continued feeling of having to pee, probably in the category of a small UTI. So step number one, let's clear out the fact that your puppy has a UTI um, or does not and is 100% healthy. That's what we need before we move into the next. Step number two or point number two or tip number two, okay? We want to monitor the amount of water intake. Hear me out here, not restrict, but monitor the amount of water intake. How we actually monitor with our puppies is we give them free access to water every single time they go out to go to the bathroom. With young puppies like this, it's pretty often, and sometimes um, they drink a lot, sometimes they drink a little bit, but having that specific window that you say, I know you had water at time, I guess 9 a.m., we just let you out. I know you got the opportunity to drink and you either drank a lot of water or a little water and then that allows us to make a plan on when you're going to need to go potty next. If you drink a lot, probably 10 to 15 minutes for the next 30 minutes to an hour. If you don't drink very much, you may be able to make it 30 minutes to an hour and a half in your crate for a little bit of crate time, no problem. So. Step number two is monitoring water. Now, um, how much water, you could get into the nitty gritty on this, and I would say that on average, puppies need in the vicinity of three ounces of water per pound of body weight. That's based off of a dry dog food diet, standard kibble like most dogs eat. If you are looking at the raw options, they're getting more moisture from their food, so you would need to make adjustments off of that. But for dry dog kibble, approximately three ounces per pound of body weight. So this little girl here needs in the vicinity of 45 ounces of water in a day. Seems like a fair amount, but if we look at our puppies drinking way more than that, that may be a place that you can cut that back just a little bit because sometimes puppies just like to drink water. Number three, we wanna look at crates specifically because potty training struggles can be both in their crate having potty accidents or in the house. We will talk about both. In the crate aspect of things, we wanna make sure that you have a size appropriate crate. Now we have multiple videos talking about the benefits and drawbacks of different brands and things out there, but one thing specifically that we see on a regular basis, if someone says I'm struggling with crate training or potty training with my dog in their crate specifically, almost every time, I'm gonna say nine and a half out of 10 times, they have a wire crate that they've used the divider to choke it down. So if you have a wire crate, let's start by throwing that thing away or at least put it into the garage until later. Most dogs that are in wire crates, 
and are not just naturally doing well with it, that is a, a key component to their struggles. Get a size appropriate, meaning they have enough room to stand in, maybe sit, turn around, lay down, but they don't have enough room to feel comfortable going to the bathroom in one side and not in the other. And the wire kennel, I, I don't know the true science behind it, but it does seem like though they are, are closed off into a smaller section of it, they still feel like maybe they do have that extra room and it can cause issues like they just can't get to it, which is also troublesome. So I would say eliminate the wire crate for puppy development. Get a plastic clamshell of your style crate that is enclosed and you will do much better. Next, point number four, setting a good routine, okay? This means knowing when your puppy needs to go to the bathroom. And for some of us, that routine is more tracking what they do on a consistent basis and keeping a log of this, if you need to to help you, is beneficial. Had a potty accident at this time, drank water at this time, went out at this time. If you start to follow exactly when they're having issues, this is gonna help you to pinpoint what needs to be changed in order to help your puppy be more successful. So building a good routine also gives your puppy the ability to understand when they're gonna have the opportunity to go to the bathroom. And this ultimately helps them to be successful knowing I get to go outside at X time and then I can go to the bathroom. I don't need to potty in my crate. I don't need to potty in the house, okay? The last and probably the most important for puppy development in the house is 100% supervision. So this is point number five, 100% supervised playtime. If your puppy is not being crated, they need 100% of your attention to make sure that you know what they need to do, okay? These guys right here fall into the category of doing really, really well in the house struggling a little bit more with crate time, but in our 100% supervised times, you're going to be able to say, I catch you in the act of either pottying or trying to poop and being able to make the adjustment. Stop doing that. That is the time that you can make the correction. We see a lot, hey, I found a potty accident. Now I'm going to discipline the dog by rubbing their nose in it, swatting them with a newspaper, something, something. All of these things are archaic and not beneficial. You need to be able to, you can correct or interrupt the behavior if you catch them timely, meaning while they're actively pottying or pooping in the house, okay? So 100% supervised time allows you to make timely corrections, which ultimately is gonna help clearly communicate to the puppy, it's not okay to go to the bathroom inside and then take them outside so they understand, yes, finish here, this is the place to go. These five tips specifically should have you headed in the right direction very soon. But please remember folks, potty training struggles are normal. If you are in the category of a puppy less than six months old and still having occasional accidents, you are in the normal zone, okay? If you are older than six months old, eh, maybe this is the time that you should be reaching out to us so to see if we can help you to identify what the problem is or the underlying issue and from there, We'd be happy to help via patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. Folks, I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Duel. We will catch you in the next video.